our look at issue 142 of the Star Trek Starship Collection. It is the Promillion Battle Cruiser. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, but yeah, it's one of those holy grail items that we, we always wanted. Uh, Eagle Moss always said that they would probably never do because uh, of licensing, because there's quite an interesting backstory to this model. Uh, but yeah, here it is. Um, yeah, we're getting some really nice ones coming up at the moment. Uh, ones that we've all been asking for, uh, and Eagle Moss said they may or may never do. Uh, and this was one of them, and I'm really, really stoked about having that. So, obviously, the uh, Promelian's battle cruiser, so it's a warship, 14th century, and it has fusion engines. Uh, we get the little stats here, 600 meters long. Uh, so yeah, we get some really nice CG uh, renders because that's how Eagle Moss works. So they must have uh, built this in CG unless they rebuilt it for the remastered um, episode. I'm not entirely sure if they did. So that means that Eagle Moss somewhere um, had to build the CG model of it. So that's really nice. Anyway, uh, it's over a, in the 24th century, it's over a thousand years old uh, when they discover it. Uh, now, if you're not too sure about what sort of ship it is, uh, then I suggest you watch Next Generation Season 3 episode, Booby Trap. It's a really nice one. Uh, but yeah, we get a, a really nice uh, back shot of the ship here. Obviously Earth there, which it never was in. Uh, but yeah, it was um, it was in a uh, an asteroid field. It, it was draining um, the energy. There was a booby trap there. The Enterprise got trapped as well. And in order to save itself, it had to destroy the ship and the asteroid field and lose it because it would have been an uh, archaeological find. Anyway, we get a really nice top view here. We got a back, front, and a really nice side view there. Uh, some interesting facts as well. So the bridge scene on the Promelian battle cruiser, where some of the uh, the the bridge controls and stuff like that were used from the Klingon Bird of Prey set uh, that we saw in Season 2 episode, A Matter of Honour. Uh, so yeah, so you know they've reused a lot of bits, we know this anyway. But yeah, there's a really, like I said, there's a really, really interesting backstory and this is sort of like that backstory now. So originally um, it was used for a comedy, comedy horror film uh, called Night of the Creeps. It's a really weird film. Um, it's It's got 80s written all over it. If you've ever seen it, you will know. If you've not seen it, just watch it anyway. It's just it's so weird. But anyway, this ship is actually in it. This is the ship that are on, the, the Creeps. Um, it's also worth noting as well, in that film, the model was filmed uh, upside down. So this would have been the bottom of the ship. And for the next generation, they just flipped it over. Um, but yeah, but basically they wanted a ship for Booby Trap, a different one and uh, they didn't have the time to build it so they borrowed this one uh, so that's where the kind of confusion comes from so it's not actually owned by uh, by the normal studios and I think that's where the problem came of Eagle Moss saying they may not be able to do it because they couldn't get uh, they wouldn't be able to get the rights to have it or something like that. Maybe they, may, obviously they have because we've we've got it now. But originally, I'm, I was led to believe that was the uh, that was the um, going forward sort of thing. So, so yeah. But I'm really really loving it. It's also worth noting that the two guys just here uh, obviously worked on a Night of Creeps and lent them the model, but effectively ended up both working in star trek anyway for voyager and enterprise and at um the imaging center where they sent all of their cgi work done so that's a really nice little backstory then we come on to star trek the next generation season three production design so how they design stuff so they wanted to to redesign the phasers so these were some of the ones they went with or were put forward uh, and then obviously the, the matte paintings that they do are absolutely amazing. Um, and obviously from from arts to physically building the sets and some like this as well, which, you know, on location, stuff like that. And how they came up with uh, 
the symbols and obviously the board there. So that's really nice. Uh, then we come on to obviously the trivia. So um, obviously we see uh, Burnham or Dr. Dr. Burnham. That's what I'm going to... It's really weird. I also know Michael Burnham, but anyway. Uh, yeah, so she um, later um, is in a Next Generation episode as uh, Captain Benteen of the Lakota, if you remember. She's appeared in many episodes. She also um, applied for the role of uh, Deanna Troy and Tasha Yar, but obviously never got them. And obviously applied for the roles of Captain Janeway and Seven of Nine, which she didn't get. So that's quite sad. Anyway, issue 143 we'll be doing here at the Nexus. Make sure you click to subscribe and also check out all our other videos and Star Trek stuff. Uh, for the merch man, the merch, merchman, merchman, vehicle from uh, Star Trek feed, the search for Spock, another ship that we wanted to see in the collection. And we've got it. Yeah, it's one of those ones that we wanted. They weren't too sure because there was never a CGI version done. We have got it. So Eagle Moss are really pulling out all the stops. And it's worth noting that they said that they were only going to do 160 issues. We are now at 142. There has been no mention of a extension. And it's getting rather, rather close now to the end. Uh, and with models like this and the other one, maybe maybe it is coming to an end. I'm, I'm going to, you know, there will be a tear shed when it comes to that. But uh, anyway, shall we have a look at the model? So out, this it? is the Promelian Battle Cruiser out of the box. And I've got to say, it's, it's really detailed. Uh, it's got this sort of um, sort of black wash over it as well. It's really nice. So I've used like um, an oil-based wash over it. So it picks out all these nice little details and sort of gives it a, an aged, weathered look. So it's really nice. And it sits in the base really nice, as you can see. It overlaps. So it's a fairly big model. Uh, it's also worth noting that the top section here is die cast and the bottom section here isn't. So it's a fairly big model and it's a fairly weighted one as well. It's not too weighted, but you can definitely feel that there is die cast in it. But there, let's have a look, uh, closer look. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of uh, detailing here. It's also worth noting that this section here that this uh, sensor pod sitting on is actually really thin and uh, in some time in, in some light levels you can it actually uh, has light bleed so you can see the light shining right through it but yeah we get some really nice we've got some back stuff here there is a lot of detail underneath and you can definitely see the weathered wash effect that I said about where um, if you're not too sure about painting it's where you paint a um, like an oil based um, dark colour over it and the, the oil runs in to these little gaps and just brings out the uh, just brings out the, um, the lines and the textures really nicely uh, but it's a similar here it's a sort of a weathered look because this, this ship is a thousand years old when they find it um, it's also it's also worth noting that it appeared uh, a few times at, on Deep Space Nine as other ships and it also represented a Klingon um, sort of shade, shuttle or freighter in an episode uh, as well where it was docked so it actually did appear quite a few times in Star Trek but originally this is how it looked um, like this on the Night of Creeps it was upside down uh, so I'm not too sure and they said that on the top here was untextured so they had to do all this texturing for the episode but yeah it's just so nice um yeah i'm really it's a really weird and interesting design that what what we've had and uh and yeah it's really really nice it's got these bits at the back here as you can see there's just quite a lot of detail but the good thing is this wash has made it them all sort of pop really bring them bring it right out I mean you can see it from here and they've done their dome section as well obviously they've had to do it so it looks weathered so it looks like it's been in space for a while and they've done a really really nice job and it's so I mean there's as you can see there's so so much detail and I'm, I'm really liking it 
but yeah, that is the uh, Pomelian Battle Cruiser from Star Trek Next Generation episode Booby Trap. Anyway, that is that is the ship, and it's really it's a really nice, interesting design. Uh, glad to have it. Like I said, it we it was one that a lot of fans wanted, and we have, and it's great. Anyway, that is this. That is it. That is it from us here at the Nexus. Make sure you check out all our other videos and you click to subscribe because we'll obviously be doing the next one after this one. Anyway, that is it from us and we'll see you at the next one.